Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ryan Griffin, and this is a popculture.com exclusive with my song, Salt, Lime, and Tequila. Boys lost that game on Sunday, gotta work a double on Monday. I wish that stack of bills would go on and pay themselves. And that glass looks half empty. I fill it up, don't let it get me down. If I know one thing, gotta take it all with a grain of salt. Yeah, lime and tequila. It all gets to fading with one. Yeah, two, maybe three margaritas. Throw them back and watch them wash all your worries away At the end of the day, all you gotta do is take Life with a grain of salt Lime and tequila Ain't much worth stressing over, let it roll right off your shoulder Time flies and life is short, so why not have one more with a dash on the rim? Pour it strong, mix it in when it don't go your way. Take it all with a grain of salt. Yeah, lime and tequila. It all gets to fading with one. Yeah, two, maybe three margaritas. Throw them back. Watch them wash all your worries away At the end of the day All you gotta do is take Life with a grain of salt Yeah, lime and tequila Just a dash on the rim Pour it strong, mix it in Yeah, you know what they say Take it all with a grain of salt Lime and tequila It all gets to fading with one One, two, maybe three margaritas Throw them back and watch them wash all your worries away At the end of the day All you gotta do is take Life with a grain of salt Lime and tequila Tequila, yeah, yeah salt, lime, and tequila. Tequila! <laughs>What's up, everyone? Victoria here with PopCulture.com, and today I'm here with one of my dear friends, Ryan Griffin, who is a country music singer here in Nashville. So talented. Uh, Ryan, hello, my friend. How are you? Hi, I'm fantastic. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm great. You know what? I'm so excited for you because we have a lot of really exciting things to talk about today. Um, literally, I think the last time I talked to you was at the very beginning of the pandemic. So I'm going to do a quick check-in with you before we get to all of that first. Yeah. How has 2021 gone? How are you doing this year? Um, we're pretty much almost done with it, but, uh, how's it I going? know it's crazy. <laughs> everything's good. Like, uh, we've had a couple, um, twists and turns along the way. Like most people, uh, we had a new baby boy right in smack dab in the middle of the pandemic. And, uh, we were kind of terrified, you know, cause this was when nobody was going to hospitals, but it ended up being the most beautiful, like just peaceful, you know, little moment. Yeah. And so we've been chasing two little boys around now and that keeps us pretty busy. Yeah. <laughs> One, didn't you and your wife uh, just drop off uh, one of your oldest one at school? Yeah. Yeah. Levi just started kindergarten, which was, I thought he was going to be like this big tearjerker moment. And, you know, cause I'm pretty like, I'm a softy when it comes to my kids. And, you know, he was just so happy and so excited about going that he was like, peace, mom and dad, I'm out. And it, I mean, it was just, You're like, all right, you couldn't cool. be sad. Yeah. I was like, all right, I guess we'll go like, let's go get coffee or something. <laughs> And now you guys are going to have a little bit more time on your hands because you won't have two. You've just got one now to take care of during those hours. Yeah. That time is going to fly when. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. There's never enough time. So anytime I can get a little bit more of it back, I'm I'm game. (laughs) I'm so happy you guys are doing well. I just I love keeping up with you online. And 
um, I'm, I'm glad that your year is going well. And I'm glad that the birth of, you. of your, your son was, um, smoother than maybe. Yeah. Maybe, than know. the first one. Yeah. yeah. Jude Michael, he, uh, he definitely made it easier on mama. I'll tell you that. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, well, listen, some very exciting news. Uh, your song, Salt, Lime, and Tequila. I just love the title. <laughs> you want literally a margarita right now. Um, I know. <laughs> you, let's, I, okay, this song has done so well. And I can't help but to ignore, I've got it written down right here. You lost your record and publishing deal. Yep. Uh, but then this song boomed on TikTok. It went number three on iTunes Country, top 10 on Sirius XM, and number six in all genres. Let's talk. It's like, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know where to begin. It's been such a crazy journey. I've been in Nashville like 15 years and um, went to school and whatnot. And then landed my first record deal that ended up not working out, landed my second record deal. And then in January, got the call that that didn't work out. And so I was just kind of in this place of, I told my wife, I was like, all right, I've done, I've done it. Like I've gone and, and chased my dream. I was like, is it, is it time for me to just like go get a job and provide security for my family? I have two kids, you know, it's like that kind of thing. Yeah. And so much credit to my wife because she said, no, the story is not over yet. You still got, you still got something left to say. And so with that, we just kept plowing ahead and I still have my management team and just kind of like my core team around me. And, uh, I threw that song up on TikTok and it just kind of took off and we've been holding on ever since. Well, take me through that. Let's start with the, you know, losing your deals. What was that yeah. feeling? Like that's never, I mean, I feel stupid asking that because it's like, it can't be a good feeling, but like, no, not it, at all. Yeah. What did that feel like, especially in the midst of a pandemic? Yeah. The first time I lost a deal, it really hit me hard. Mm -hmm. It was so much of my identity. I found out was wrapped up in what I did. And so in a lot of ways, the first time losing that deal kind of unraveled a lot of, um, I guess the, the baggage of it, you know, the emotional and like, just really hit, hit me hard. Second time I lost the deal. The first thing that ran across my mind was, oh man, how am I going to send my kids to college? Mm -hmm. So it was just very different. Like first time it was all about me. Second time it was very much about the seasonal life I'm in my family. So, you know, that was a real struggle. Like my parents came up and that's when we actually shot the video of Salt Lime Tequila. I was in the truck with my dad yeah. and they had come up just to like be here because they know how hard it is. You know, they know I've worked at this for a really long time and just the this, this struggles and the stress that it puts on our family and myself. And so they came up just kind of be a support system. And thank God they did, because, I mean, it just made everything kind of take off. So let's talk about how it took off. It started on TikTok, right? Take me through that. Yeah. Stuff, like when it just boomed almost like overnight. For you. <laughs> so it's so funny. Like my dad, like I said, was up here and he and I were just running some errands and whatnot. And I threw the phone up and I was thinking to myself, I was like, he'd love this song. Cause I grew up kind of in the keys, South Florida, most of my life. And, and, you know, salt lime and tequila, it just has like this beachy vibe to it. And so I threw the phone up and first off, he's like, what are you doing? Why are you recording me? And I was like, pops, don't worry about it. Just listen to this song. Yeah. And so I threw the phone up, turned it on. And he just perfectly was like, you know, I sound good on a boat. And we call him bobblehead now because he just sat there in the truck while he was driving and did this. He oh. actually self-proclaimed. He named himself. <laughs> um, but yeah, so oh, that's a great, a great gift idea for him. Get yeah. his own little personal bobblehead. Um, far away you could just start designing one now exactly <laughs> um but yeah so I did that and I got home and I threw it up and I woke up the next morning and it had like 1.4 million views and it just took off it went truly viral and the thing that was crazy is I sat there and I read all the comments and all the comments were just so positive and encouraging and then I started sharing my story on TikTok and I was like guys you have no idea how much this means to me and I just told him the whole story about losing two record deals, not knowing what I was going to do, um, you know, and it just, it just kind of became this really authentic, genuine uh, relationship with the fans on TikTok and the friends on TikTok. Um, 
And so we just have continued to kind of try to build it from there. You know, the crazy thing is, is that everybody on TikTok then went and streamed it on Spotify and Apple and all them, Amazon, once we put it out and it just continued growing. XM grabbed it, threw it up there. The support from the fans just made that continue growing. Now it's top 10. I got to make my Opry debut like two Fridays ago. Yeah, I mean, it's. It's just like this. It's just going and going and going. People are calling and booking us to play shows now. And we're, we're just like holding on. Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I was going to address that. Yes, you had your Opry debut, which is huge in country music. Uh, what was that feeling like standing on that stage? It was so layered for me because it all started like back in the day when I was a kid and really tight knit family we would have Sunday dinners at grandma and grandpa's house. Mm -hmm. And so after that dinner, grandpa and I would go sit over and on the couch and that's where he introduced me to the Opry. We would sit there and watch that together. It was just like our thing. And once I started to kind of realize that this is what I wanted to do for a living and a dream I wanted to chase, you know, he always encouraged me. He's like, you'll be, you'll be standing in that circle one day. And even till the day he passed years ago, he would say that he'd be like, just keep pushing you know, you're going to be in that circle one day. So with everything that the journey I've been on, you know, 15 years in Nashville, two record deals, and then to be able to stand on that stage, be asked, you know, you have to be asked to play at the Opry Mm -hmm. um, and then get the opportunity to stand in that circle was just a really, really big moment for me. And for many reasons, um, but the icing on, on the cake was I started singing Salt, Lime, and Tequila, like the chorus, mm-hmm. in the entire Opry house, sang it back to me. And I was floored. I could not believe it. Like, people were coming up to me afterwards at work there, and they were like, it doesn't happen. And it was just a really cool moment. Um, yeah, it was just a really, really cool moment. Well, I think that you are more than deserving of that, Ryan. Um, Thank you. So incredibly blown away. I'm still rocking to your other songs from last summer. Like you were such a <laughs> summer song person for me and I appreciate it. Like when you came out with Soul Lime Tequila, I was like, finally, another summer song. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. I'm just so proud of you. And in a, in a, Thank you. In a point in time where um, social media, there's a lot of negativity on social media, especially like after the year that we just came out of, um, there's yeah. a lot of positive things that do happen on social media. And I think that you are a shiny example of that, of how the fans have really mm. helped, you know, thrust you into that direction that you deserve. Um, Thank and, you. Yeah, I agree. And, like, yeah. and I just find that so fascinating that like TikTok is really kind of what helped yeah. you. In this well, I, I agree that like the fans you know, are a huge, really the the only reason that I'm able to do this. The reason that we're sitting here, you know, talking about um, my career and just like the video that's coming out, which I'm so excited about. I love it. (laughs) Um, It's, you know, it's truly because of my story base is based a hundred percent on fans engaging, championing me and, you know, like giving me that chance to really get my music out there. So I hope that my goal walking into all of this, whether I'm walking on a stage or sitting in front of a camera or whatever, it's like life's way too short. We need to be spreading as much joy and positivity as possible. And so that's kind of the mindset that I'm I'm really trying to focus on and walk into everything with, because what's the point if you're not doing that, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you. And that music video, by the time this video comes out for fans to see yes. the music video will uh, be right around the corner. So uh, was your wife in the music video? Did I see her correct? Yeah. So yes. yes, all of my friends were in the music video. It was so crazy because we just, we had the option of like, you know, hire this big team and, and bring a bunch of extras in and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, you know what? I went back to what we just talked about with like fans and genuine and being on TikTok. I was like, I just want to share this with my friends. Yeah. I want to share my friends with, with my, my, with my other friends, you know, fans on TikTok or whatever. And, you know, so everybody on the boat knew each other, you know, and we just had a big old party and it was a blast. <laughs> it looked like, it. I was like, dang, I still have somehow, I've had two opportunities to go on the lake this summer and both mm-hmm. rained out. 
And I'm uh, like, I, the fact that I have not been on the water this summer is so disappointing, but I am going down to Florida soon. So I will be on a yes. beach, uh, which is That's great. amazing. Hey, um, well, before summer ends, let's go hop on a boat. Well, let's, let's please do. We'll plan that after this video. Just like we're going to plan yeah. it. <laughs> we're drinking wine. We're going on a boat. <laughs> and we're going to lime and tequila for sure. Um, Heck yeah. Well, talking about snowballing, before I let you go, um, talking about the snowballing of, of just how everything is kind of falling into place, you have some really exciting events coming up. You uh, signed on with Stagecoach for next year. Yes. I'm, is- I'm so excited about that. Huge. Tell me yeah. how much thrilled you are for that. It's one of those, like, one of those pillars, one of those those uh, achievements that I've, I've kind of always been pointing towards, you know? And, you know, Opry was a big one for me. And now getting to you know, being asked to play at Stagecoach, that's just, it's going to be so much fun. And the environment's just incredible. I've never actually been, so it's going to be a first for me in every way. And yeah. I'm really, really pumped. It's going to be cool. I think I'm going to have to find a way out to California to come to that. Yes, please do. LA. So like I have a bunch of friends that would go out there and go to Stagecoach. Um, and I've got a few other friends that are going to be performing. So like, nice. do I need more of a reason? Um, nope. <laughs> Coast Jam. Um, you are also going to be performing at, correct? Yeah, that actually just got postponed or rescheduled to next year. Uh, you know, you. down in Florida, the whole yeah. thing yeah. that's going on. going on. So we were bummed about that because we were opening for Brooks and Dunn, and that was the first show concert I'd ever went to. So I was like, "Yes, oh. this is amazing!" But <laughs> next year, gosh, we yeah. just be patient. We'll, we'll we'll reconvene next year, and then we'll talk about it for sure. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yes. Brian, um, really quick, what's next for you? I, I feel like the future just looks so bright for you, but what do you have on the books for us? Gosh, um, I am literally going to put out a ton of songs on TikTok and really use that platform and the fans that have created this for me to help me figure out like what songs they really love and, and share that with everybody. And the ones that that people love, we'll, we'll release them. I mean, it's not at this point, we're, we're doing it as simple as possible. It's not rocket science. It's like, write the best music I can put it out on TikTok for fans when they love it, release it and give it to them and then go tour. And that's basically like, just keep what it about the music. What do you need? I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. You're letting the fans decide. And I think that that's a really smart thing uh, for you to do. And Ryan, I just adore you. I think that um, you have a, you're just doing so well and I'm so proud of you. I just can only imagine Thank how you. the music industry can be at times and um, to, to have your fans support you like that is just really something to be proud of. So congrats on this new song. I can't wait for fans to see it. It's really special. Song. Thank you. And hearing people sing back your song is like, is the the pinnacle for me. You know, it's like, I, I'm good. I can go out right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love yes. that. I love it for you, man. Well, Listen, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. It's always so good to see you. I'm going to let you go uh, drink some tequila. I see that right behind you. I'm going to drink water right now, yes. but I'm going to join you here in a few hours. I'm going to down some tequila. Hey. I've got a whole bottle down here. <laughs> Cheers to you. I appreciate you. Cheers, my friend. Have a wonderful day. Uh, everyone, for more on Ryan Hartman and your other favorite celebrities, make sure you keep it right here at popculture.com. <laughs>